I'm Carol Marie, and I'm with my mom, Lillian Hart. We're here in Big Bear City in her kitchen, and we're taking you through the 10 steps of moving out of fog into the favor of God. Yes. And so we're wanting to give you some helps of how to work through this time of grieving or trauma that you've maybe experienced mm -hmm. and, and loss and mm -hmm. how to get through it and realize there is a new normal. Mm -hmm. Right, Mom? Yeah, I <laughs> now, today we're going to talk on number six, and it is some tips on dealing with loneliness. I think that was mm -hmm. one of the hardest things for me, Mom, yes. because I married right out of you and Dad's household, mm -hmm. and then I married a homebody. Sonny was always home. And then even when the kids left, he was home. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I was alone. Mm -hmm. And I remember moving to Tennessee. And when I got my first place, oh, my goodness, mm -hmm. I couldn't stand to be by myself. Mm -hmm. And I went to Walmart. And I would, I would go up and down the aisles, and I'd visit with all the employees. I got to know them all by name. <laughs> in fact, I remember my first birthday in Tennessee, I made them all sing happy birthday to me. <laughs> and I would just end up shop till I dropped. Mm -hmm. I would not spend money, but just look at stuff. And mm -hmm. and finally, when I'd be so tired, like one or two in the morning, mm -hmm. I'd go home and plop into bed just mm -hmm. because it was so hard. Mm -hmm. And you kind of went through that too yes. when you were widowed. Uh huh. Well, um, I didn't want to be at a home alone. And so... Uh, first, I took uh, organ lessons, <laughs> and then I joined um, a bowling team. I was a substitute <laughs> bowler, a very poor bowler, but I was on the team and had given me something to do. And then uh, I joined every Bible study that oh, was my. in town, and I was literally running from one appointment to another until evening, and then I had to go to an empty house. And you know, a lot of people deal with that. I, when I'm doing a class, I'll ask them, how many of you sleep with a bunch of pillows tucked around you mm -hmm. just to feel like there's a somebody next to you? And mm -hmm. I mean, the hands go up. They, mm -hmm. they do. Yeah. And <clears throat> so loneliness is, you know, it's a new normal. We're learning mm -hmm. how to be by ourselves. Yeah. And yet, many times people can be taken advantage of because yes. they are lonely. Uh -huh. And so, um, everything from uh, people all of a sudden wanting to help them. I remember uh, one widow that was at our uh, widow center. There was this couple that came in, and they were always helping her, taking her to the grocery store, just doing really sweet things. Mm -hmm. And she knew them, and it, mm -hmm. it was kind of a friend, so it wasn't like we could, you know, uh, screen all the volunteers, mm -hmm. like what we did, but this was a friend of theirs, mm -hmm. of hers. And so next thing you know, they're telling her about their hardship, and they can't pay their rent, and this and that. Mm -hmm. And she's draining her savings account mm -hmm. to help them. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, so, and and they maybe just weren't really out to take advantage of her. Maybe mm -hmm. she just had a big heart. I also know, though, of situations where family members, mm -hmm. where they want uh, grandma to babysit or they're mm -hmm. wanting... I know one situation where not only was she asked to babysit, but they wanted her to build on this grandmother's quarter onto the house mm -hmm. and then move her in, and she paid for it all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then she's watching the kids. Well, then all of a sudden, the family, the daughter-in-law is upset with her, and the, mm -hmm. you know, it, mm -hmm. and she's already gone through her money. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I've heard, you know, I don't want to, turn down my children because if I make my daughter-in-law upset mm -hmm. she won't let me see my grandchildren oh, yeah and mm -hmm. then if they've already had loss mm -hmm. they don't want to have additional loss yes uh -huh. so one of the things that we want to encourage you is mm -hmm. as you're working through this into this new normal mm -hmm. while you're working through yeah. the fog get some people that you can trust mm -hmm. and you don't have to run till you drop mm -hmm. uh, because it it causes your grief recovery to extend. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you know, because you're not facing it. You're staying busy. Yeah. So then you haven't worked through it. So I know women mm -hmm. that it's been 20 years and they still haven't worked through it. And mm -hmm. it's because they just stay busy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, but tell about the, the prayer shawls. I think mm -hmm. that's precious. Well, I asked some ladies if they would uh, crochet or knit a prayer shawl, which would be just a, a rectangle, uh, maybe 30 inches wide and 60 inches long. And then um, I, the new person coming into grief share would um, I would just wrap them and say, I wrap you in the love of Jesus. And one lady said, going home to an empty house is the hardest part for me. So she said, I fold my prayer shawl <laughs> and lay it on my husband's chair. And then when I come home from work, I just wrap that shawl around me and sit in my husband's chair and I feel the love of Jesus. And she's letting Jesus fill that empty spot, yes, isn't she? Uh -huh. You know, he's, he's promised that he will comfort those who mourn. Yes. And so there is a new normal, and it's, it, sometimes it takes a little while. But we just pray for you, and we mm -hmm. bless yes. you with uh, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said he sent the Holy Spirit to be our comforter. Mm -hmm. And so we bless you with that. And mm -hmm. as you travel through the 10 steps of moving out of the fog into the favor of God, yes. know that one of the parts of the God's favor is that he loves you. Yes. And he'll never leave you or forsake you. Mm -hmm. And he has sent the comforter to love on you. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs>